All right, shalom, most high in Christ bliss. This is Officer Marshall from IUIC, South Carolina. I know y'all see Columbia, but we got a lot of things going on in the body right now, and it's all in the spirit of the most high. So we give the most high God and his son Jesus to Christ all praises and glory for moving us in that spirit. So with all of that being what is the work that we're required to do, that's why today's class is called job, question mark, career, question mark, or calling. Because we're all called into this truth. We're all called into this gospel to do a work. And we need to examine ourselves whether we're minded to do the work, whether we really have our mind set to do the work, because if we're not set to do the work, the Lord is going to find other people to come into the vineyard and set up his kingdom on earth. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let me get my iPad open. Let's go ahead and start off with Romans chapter 15, verse 4. This is a typical uh, scripture that we all start with because we have to be reminded. Israel is hard-headed. <laughs> throughout the scriptures, the, the prophets are always repeating themselves. Because throughout the generations, we've gone through the same situations, and we have to come out of that same funk. So let's go ahead and read that. This is the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Go ahead. But whatsoever things were written aforetime go ahead. were written for our learning, go ahead. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the part I want to focus on is in our patience. We need to be comforted by the scriptures because there are going to be a lot of things that we over uh, have to overcome there are going to be a lot of things that we're going to have to deal with in these days and times so patience deals with being able to not get upset not get angry when you're going through a trial and when you're being tested in this walk right so read that again through patience through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope we might have hope as we overcome these issues get second timothy 3 and 16 because that patience, what, what's really being tried in our patience? Our character, our spirit, where is our mindset? What are we committed to doing in this walk? What are we planning to do? What are we invested to doing in this calling? Go ahead, read. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. So God knows his children. God knows his people. He knows what we deal with. He knows what, what we're battling with. He knows the situations that we're going to have to overcome to get the kingdom. Read on. And it's profitable for doctrine, uh -huh. for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So these are the instructions that we need to take in righteousness. These are the instructions that we need so that we can set up our mind like the mind of Christ. So that we can understand how to do the will of the Lord and do what's pleasing in his sight. These are the instructions we must follow. Read on. That the man of God uh -huh. may be perfect, thor thoroughly furnished. That's correct. Thoroughly furnished. Thorough. Nothing is going to be left out when you're thoroughly furnished. And you know what? We, we got a lot of things to clean up within ourselves, within our community, within our nation. We have a lot of things to clean up. So we have to be thoroughly furnished so that all these good works can come out of us and be put into the nation. Read on. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Go ahead. Chapter 4. That's it. That's it there. So, the, like we just said, the class is called Job, Calling, or Career. So, let's jump into these definitions. Let's get the first definition up. What is a job? What is a job? Everybody got jobs. Jobs. You ask a brother, what's your job, brother? What do you do? Let's look at what a job is, because this, this is what the white man promises Negroes in politics. We need more jobs for the Negroes. Let's look at what the definition of a job is. Read. Job. Definition one. A paid position of regular employment. A paid position of regular employment. Go ahead. Definition two. A task or piece of work especially one that is paid. So ain't nobody want to do a job that you don't get paid for. But do we treat this truth like a job? So read the verb. Verb one, do casual 
or occasional work. Do casual or occasional work. Do you treat this truth like a job? Do you do casual or occasional work? If you're doing casual or occasional work, it's not going to be thorough at all because you really don't care. You really are not invested. All it is is just to meet your current temporary need and then you off to doing something else. Let's get the next one. Two. Bye. Uh, no, no, uh, we're going to career. What is it? What's the difference between a job and career? Let's see what the difference between a job and a career is. You got that? All right. So let's see what a career is. Go ahead. Career, an occupation undertaken for a significant period of a person's life and with opportunities for progress. So a career is an occupation, and you would take on this occupation for a significant period of time. Usually with a career, people retire. They spend about 30, 35 years doing something. Some people 20, 25, 30, 35 years doing a particular occupation. And within that, they have opportunities for progress. That's why you have these things called promotions. And we're going to get into that thing too. Because do you treat this truth like a career? You're just only looking for promotion? Get the next definition. Next definition. Calling. I want to look at the definition of a calling. A calling. So I want to focus on definition two. Definition two. Yes, sir. Calling. A strong urge toward a particular way of life or career. A vocation. So, matter of fact, look at that uh, middle similarity, synonym. It says Mission. Uh, mission. Mission-minded. Mission goes into being nation-minded. When you have the calling and you understand what this calling is in this truth, you have a strong urge toward a particular way of life. That way of life is keeping the commandments. And then as you learn the commandments, you learn how to deal with yourself how to love yourself properly. You learn how to love your neighbor properly. You learn how to structure a family properly. And then you learn how to build your nation properly. So all of these things, you got to ask yourself, and this is one of those self-examination classes. Do you treat, whether you're a man, woman, or a child, do you treat this truth like a job, a career, or do you treat it as a calling? Do you recognize it as a calling? So, Let's get into it. Let's get Matthew 22. Let's get Matthew 22. And we're going to start at verse 1. We're going to do a little bit of reading. All right? Read it when you got it. Matthew chapter 22, verse 1. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king. So that king is Christ. Read which made a marriage for his son. Go ahead. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the marriage to, uh -huh. to the wedding. And they would not come. So he sent forth his servants, the prophets, to call them that were bidden. So there are people that the Lord is calling into his kingdom. He calling them to understand and, and know that the kingdom is set up for you. But what do they do? Read on. Again, he sent forth other servants, uh -huh. saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. Go ahead. And all things are ready. So the prophets are sent generation after generation after generation to the children of Israel. And, and it's being said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand in this generation. But we're going to have to make sure that we're not treating this like a job or a career, like it's just something temporary, like it's just a fad or a trend. No, this is a calling for you to understand that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Keep reading, though. Come unto the marriage. Uh-huh. But they made light of it. They made light of it. Read on. And went their ways. Go ahead. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. So, let 
you know, some people when they're reading, they're like, what, what does it mean to make light of something? What does it mean to, let's get that in Luke chapter 14. Let, let's see what making light of being called, being bidden to the feast, being bidden to step into your calling, your purpose, your God-given purpose. What does it sound like? What does that look like in today's time? Luke chapter 14, verse 17. This is the same parable. Read. Luke chapter 14, verse 17. Go ahead. And sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden. Go ahead. Come, for all things are now ready. So all we got to do is just show up. Be a part of what's going on. Step into it. Bring our time, our talents, and our understanding and increase in those things because everything else is ready. Prepare ourselves because Christ is coming back. Read on. And they all, with one consent, uh -huh. began to make excuses. So you mean to tell me all these people that were being called to the feast of the Lord had one consent to make excuse? Make excuse. Well, my job. That, oh, we hear that all the time. My job, you know, or uh, sickness. Sabbath sickness is a legitimate thing. If you ain't in the spirit, you don't understand the value of these commandments, Sabbath sickness will destroy you in this truth. It will destroy, it has destroyed many reputations. That's a part of those excuses. Where's your mind really set when you get the devil on your shoulder and excuses start to jump up? Or, or, or do you acknowledge your calling and say, you know what? Beyond my own personal thinking, I have to trust in the Lord and do what God says. Read that part again. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuses. They made light of it by making excuses. Oh, that is, I can do this later. Okay, read on. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of, of ground. Go ahead. And I must needs go and see it. Go ahead. I pray thee have me excused. And then brothers and sisters like that always try to play on your empathy. They'll try to throw a situation out there that kind of ties you up, and then they, they don't want you to think spiritually about it. They don't want you to deal spiritually with them on the issue. But please let me be excused. I got to go check on this, that, and the third. I got to go check. I, my job just called me in. Okay. So you got time to maintain the state of this world, but you don't have time to build up the kingdom. So why did you come here? Why did you decide to show up here and then make excuses to, uh, away from doing the Lord's work. Go back to Matthew 22. And where were we? Verse 6. Yes, sir. So when they made light of it, they made excuses. If you are one of the, let's get that in Sirach real quick. If you are the type of brother or sister that excuses always come from, you need to check your spirit. Examine yourself. Examine yourself thoroughly. Thoroughly. Don't be clueless. Examine yourself. Sirach, chapter 32, verse 17. Go ahead. A sinful man will not be reproved. A sinful man or woman will not be reproved. Because correction is going to come when you make those excuses. When you make light of certain situations and things that you need to be doing in the body, someone who loves you is going to correct you. They're going to say, well, you ain't got other time to do that. We really need another person. We, we need your help. But then as the excuses continue to uh, uh, ante up, lies and deceit come into it, now you're in the midst of sin. You got to learn to stop making these excuses. Read on. But findeth an excuse according to his so will. So this excuse, being excused is not according to the will of God. It's according to your own will. And if we live by our own will, we'll only stand in the midst of sin. Understand that. Believe that. If you live by your own will, if that will is not attached to the will of God, you're going to always remain in sin. When correction from the Lord comes, you won't even be able to recognize it because you're not studying. You're not paying attention to what God is instructing you to do. You're, not, you're no longer following the instructions that come along with your calling. That's why you treat this like a job. Or you may be deceitful enough to try to treat it like a career. But let's go back. Let's go back. A sinful man will not be reproved. They will just make up excuses. If you make up excuses, you're in the midst of sin. All right. Verse 6. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 6. Go ahead. 
And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully Go ahead. and slew them. So these people who like to make excuses, they're also violent enough that when you do want to correct them, they'll, they'll, they'll slay the men that are there to actually help and correct them for righteousness sake. They will kill them. That's why in these Christian churches, they're being called to with all these church blisses. They're, they're being called to to the feast that they may understand the way of the Lord better, understand these scriptures better. But they don't want that. They want to stay in their lustful, deceitful, their, their money ridden ways. That's what they want to live by. But read on. But when the king heard thereof, uh -huh. he was wroth. Go ahead. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers. Go ahead. And burned up their city. Go ahead. Then saith he to his servants, Go ahead. the wedding is, is ready. So everything is ready. The kingdom is awaiting us to get ourselves together. Read on. That's right. But they which were bidden were not worthy. Ah, they were not worthy. Why weren't they worthy? Because they made excuse. Read on. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So when the prophets go out to the streets, two by two, Four-man camp, eight-man camp, blitzes going on throughout the year, all across the globe. What are we doing? We're out there following the understanding of Christ. We're setting up camp so that we can call our people and compel them to come in, that they may understand the way of the Lord more perfectly and change their lives, change the communities around them, build up God's kingdom on earth. That's what we're called to do. But read on. So those servants went out. Into the highways. So the prophets learned their instruction, learned their calling, and went out and did it. Read. And gathered together all as many as they found. Go ahead. Both bad and good. Read that part again. Both bad and good. So understand this. In this calling, if you're in these little sanctuaries, understand that bad and good are going to come in. But we have to learn how to administer the right medicine through the scriptures that they all may be found worthy in the day of the Lord's return. That's what we're all called in here to do. That's nation building. That's what we must do. Read that part again from the top. So those servants went out into the highways uh -huh. and gathered together all as many as they found, uh -huh. both bad and good. Because everybody's coming from different backgrounds, situations. But once you come into this calling, your experience is going to build the hope in somebody else because why we learned who we need to be according to these scriptures we learn that thing and you learn it throughout generations the prophets are always subject to the prophets of, of that were before them so we have our bishops our deacons our captains who were laboring before us going out to the highways hedges then compelling us to come in now that we're in here what should we be doing we should be building up the next generation of believers that's stepping into your calling not treating this like a job or a career. But read on. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Go ahead. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. So this is when we get into the thick of it. You're called unto a wedding. And the king came in and saw that there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. So if you're not in the right apparel in the day of the Lord's return, See, this cuts that, 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 that situation where the woman say, I don't have to be in no dress. If you understood this parable, and you understood what the Lord was requiring of you in these last days, you will understand that preparing yourself properly, following the instructions of the Lord, is what really gets you the access. What really shows that you are about your calling. Read on. And he said unto him, Go ahead. Friend, how comest thou in hither? Not having a wedding garment. So you knew you was coming to a wedding. You, you knew this was going to be a grand occasion. Why you don't have on a wedding garment? Read on. And he was speechless. He was speechless. Because you already knew that you were coming to a wedding. You, you ain't, there's going to be nobody, nobody, who can say that they didn't know. So in that day, the per this person was speechless. At least, at least their speechlessness was wise. At least, at least they ain't try to make more excuse. There's some people in, in, in congregations and in the world that think that they're going to have a chance to negotiate with Christ in the last days. Hell no. It ain't going down like that. There isn't, 
you're going to be speechless just like this person. You're going to be speechless. There's nothing to say. You didn't follow the instructions. You didn't prepare yourself for that feast. You didn't prepare yourself for the kingdom. No kingdom for you. So what does that judgment look like? Read on. Then said the king to the servants. Go ahead. Bind him hand and foot and take him away. Go ahead. And cast him into outer darkness. Cast them to outer darkness. Torments. Desolation. Destruction. Because you didn't prepare yourself properly for what was to come. Now. Verse 14 is the point. Read. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Go ahead, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called. That's why our leadership will actually say this truth is a revolving door. One day you walk in, you may stay for a little while. Then next thing you know, because, matter of fact, we're going to get into that. Mark 4. But I, before that, I want Peter's. Is it 1 Peter or 2 Peter 1 and 10? Many are called, but few are chosen. So as we study and examine ourselves, the scriptures don't lie. They don't come void. They don't come back void. They, once you line them up properly, you should know how to line your, your walk up properly as well. So it said, uh, you got it? 2 Peter 1 and 10? Yes, sir. Go ahead, read that. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 10. Go ahead. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. So my brothers and my sisters, this class is about making our, making or giving diligence to make our calling and election sure. Because God has chosen all of us to come into this truth. He's called all of us, but now we have to give diligence and add to ourselves certain virtues throughout our walk so that we can be prepared to take on the kingdom of heaven. Y'all understand? So read that one more time again. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Uh -huh. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. If ye do these things, you will not fall. We're all called. We've been chosen. We've been elected for this work. So now we have to give diligence. There has to be some growth involved. So let's get into it. We're going to deal with the four types of Israelites for, for because the Lord know who he's choosing from. It said in that feast, it was bad and good. So let's deal with the four types of Israelites. And we're going to dive in this because you're going to be able to see the difference between those that consider it a job. And that's what we're going to start with first. Uh, so we said that a job is a temporary occupation. For some people, it's a chore. It's a necessity for my, my reputation. Or, and, and matter of fact, we actually had some classes recently that dealt with being a casual believer. Casual or occasional. Those people who show up when they want to. They're treating this like the Christian church. They show up on Eastern, uh, uh, well, Eastern Christmas Sunday. Uh, or, uh, but then the truth is Passover and Purim, things of that nature, right? That they, they casual believers. They show up when, um, oh, promotion time, you know? I think they can just slide in the MOV and this, that, and that. Hey, I, you know, I've been really wanting. Ma no. Matter of fact, let's, let's, let's get into it. Mark 4, verse 14. Let's get into this parable. This is type one, your, your job, your job type Israelite. They treat this truth like a job. They treat the truth like a job. Go ahead. This is the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 14. Okay. Bring the sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, mm -hmm. and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. So the word that's being sown in our hearts is proper instruction for us to get our lives together. That's why when brothers come into the truth, they automatically get the welcome home kit. They don't get the precept packet just yet because what we have to do is learn those instructions that are meet for our, our, our beginner level and it's going to instruct us to righteousness. Those are the beginning steps of us understanding the value of the scriptures being applied in our lives. But if you treat it like a job, you're a casual believer, even those fundamental things that we learn in this truth and, and, and in the understanding that of who we are as God's people, the Israelites, it gets taken away because you allow your flesh to rule over your spirit. 
You allow that thing. So read that part again. And these are they by the wayside uh -huh. where the word is sown. So the word, the servants are going out to the highways and hedges everywhere. Everywhere. You, you, if your neighborhood has not been hit with the prophets yet, don't worry. It's coming. But the prophets are going out to the highways and hedges, the chief places of concourse, and compelling the people to come in. It's just a matter of time before you encounter them. If you ain't seen it on YouTube yet, something is wrong with you. We, we, hey, even though the white man is trying to keep us away from the, the wavelengths, it, he can't. It's, it's impossible. This is the Lord's work. And all the men and women and children that are part of this calling are being moved by the spirit of the Lord to make this thing happen. So there's no way you're not seeing this. Read that part again. And these are they by the wayside. Go ahead. Where the word is sown. Uh-huh. But when they have heard. When they have heard. Now you got a decision to make. I got a decision to make. When you hear something, you don't just hear something and just, you know. Matter of fact, if you was outside in the dark and you heard something rustling in the woods, you automatically going to get a chill down your spine because you're like, what the hell is that off in the woods? I need to figure out what that is. And then you, matter of fact, you're going to go to safety because your mind is discerning based off what you heard. So these people who are on the streets hearing the word of God and they allow Satan to take it away from them, they made a decision within themselves to stay in the midst of their sin. Finish that off. Satan cometh immediately. Satan cometh immediately. Why? Because Satan know who he's dealing with. You know, Satan going to try all spirits. Some will give it, give Satan his uh, uh, power a little more quickly. Read on. And taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And we see it all the time. That person, they're starting to understand something. They're beginning to accept it. Then that other person just walk up and start whispering in their ear. And you can't help but see that that's Satan, right? But this is that job type because some, this ain't talking about those without. This is talking about those within. We have these type of Israelites inside schools. Then when you give them offices, various things, or, or you're trying to give them opportunities to grow in the spirit, they say, you know what? I'm not ready for that. So let's get John chapter 10, verse 7, because this is what we actually see. Uh, you, you, this is uh, the parable dealing between the hireling and the shepherd. So this, to the hireling, it's just a job. Let's get into that. This is the book of John, chapter 10, verse 7. Go ahead. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Go ahead. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Uh-huh. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. So if we follow Christ... We understand the value of Christ. We understand the, uh, uh, Christ in these scriptures. We're, we have salvation awaiting us. It's already prepared. It's already ready. Go ahead. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. We'll find rest. Go ahead. The thief cometh not but for to steal. Go ahead. And to kill and to destroy. Go ahead. I am, I am come that they might have life. So Christ came and compelled us and gave charge to the prophets that we all may have life. Life. The only way we get life is through the commandments. All right, let's get that real quick. Proverbs 7 and 2. And we're going to come right back. How do we get life? Because some of y'all may be the first time listeners. Y'all may be tuning in for the first time. So we're going to deal with some of these basic precepts. I, you know, ain't none of these precepts basic. Fundamental. I like that better. Fundamental. What gives us life? What allows us to live uh, and come out of this dead estate of sin? Read that, Proverbs 7 and 2. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 2. Go ahead. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandments and live. Read. And my law as the apple of thine eye. So we have to cherish the laws of God. We have to see value. We have to gain more understanding of God's laws because that's what's going to increase our wisdom. That's going to, it's going to show more value in us as we keep God's laws. So let's also get Matthew 19 verse 16. 
want to get straight to the point. I don't want to lose the point. But how do we get eternal life? How do we get eternal life? Go ahead. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. Go ahead. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So one came unto Christ and asked him, What do I, if you're coming to give us life, what do I have to do to get eternal life? Read on. And he said unto him, Uh huh. Why callest thou me good? Good. There Read is on. none good but one that is God. So God is good because he set everything in order. It's already prepared. There's, there's nothing we have to do but get in line. Understand what the calling is and follow the calling. Follow the calling. That's why he calls us sheep. His sheep will hear his voice. And wherever he is, they will follow him and find him and know that there is rest. Read on. But if thou will enter into life. If you will enter into that eternal life. If you want the kingdom. Read on. Keep the commandments. The commandments give us life. As Negroes out in America, like bishops say, we were a creation. We jumped off the lab table, ran into society, and then duplicated ourselves in society, and then got on drugs, and then created more generations of messed up children. But Christ still came to deal with the good and the bad to fix us all. So what we have to do now is take heed to the commandments fix our lives let that be the stability of these times and even our minds and come back and get eternal life and set up the kingdom here on earth right as it is in heaven so let's go back to john 10 and verse 10 this is the book of john chapter 10 verse 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal go ahead and to kill and to destroy read i am come that they might have life. So Christ came that we may have life. When we keep the commandments, life is behind that thing. A, a, a rest is being set up for us in the kingdom. Read on. And that they might have it more abundantly. That's why it's called eternal life. Read on. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. Yes. Read. The, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So did Christ not give his life for us? that we may have remission of sins, that we may have grace to fix our sins and learn how to deny it and grow in spirit to do so. Read on. But he that is in hireling. He that is a hireling. This hireling just got a temporary, casual, occasional job. What is the hireling going to do? Read. And not the shepherd. Go ahead. Whose who's own the sheep are not. Go ahead. See if the wolf coming. And leaveth the sheep and fleeth. What does the hireling do? Leaveth the sheep and fleeth. So, because it's a casual, occasional occupation. Not, well, not even an occupation. You don't even be occupied by it. Your mind ain't even focused on what got to be done in this particular job. You just show up. Matter of fact, y'all ever been to a store or a restaurant and you just see the girl. I'm like, I got to paint the picture now. See the girl with the gum, and she blowing the bubble, and she don't care about nothing going on at the job. And, and then, it ain't even a Jamaican restaurant, but she say to herself, we don't have nothing. I don't got that. Nah. But these hirelings of today are these Christian pastors, these so-called politicians. These things we got to be able to recognize. We got to be able to understand things in our personal lives to where when spiritual things are coming out, you be able to recognize that thing. So read that part again. Let's start from the top of verse 12. Yes, sir. But he that is in hireling uh -huh. and not the shepherd. So that's not their job. Go ahead. Whose own the sheep are not. So the hireling doesn't own these sheep. The hireling has not invested in those sheep. Read on. See if the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep. And flee. So when you're not invested in this truth, guess what you will do? At any given moment, you will leave. Most times, because it's a temporary thing anyway, you just want to come be nosy or be, come investigate or whatever. You know, <laughs> what it is is, I, I'm, I, this is why I left IUIC. This is why I left the truth. Right? Read on. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Because that person was not invested. They could care less. They were casual. It was just something to, to just pass the time. 
let's see, let's pull up some of these pictures of these uh, uh Christian pastors because they they are definitely the hirelings. Let's pull some pictures up. Let's show let's let's just show that one. Show that one. Yes, look at ball face ain't keeping commandment one, but wanting to teach people about how to get salvation. You, you, you can't do that. He's not invested in the people. He's invested in making in lining his pockets. Lining his pockets, getting the, the, the fame, right? That matter of fact, that's gonna go into type two. Did we finish that out? Read verse 13 and 14. Yes, sir. The hireling, the hireling flee. Go ahead. Because he is in hireling. <laughs> he can't do anything outside of what his job is or where his mindset is. Because he's the hireling, he's not thinking to invest himself. He's going to run because he is a hireling. Read on. And care not for the sheep. He don't care about his people. Have no care. It's more so about him, his personal gain, rather than the benefit of his people. Read on. I am the good shepherd. Go ahead. And know my sheep. Go ahead. And am known of mine. So, ask yourself, do I treat this truth like a job at any given moment when responsibilities are given to me or things are asked of me to do? Do I flee? Do I run? Do I make excuses? Do I purposefully not show up so that I don't have to do anything? Do I purposefully, purposefully make excuses so I can't be used by the Lord? That's ultimately what you got to think about. So let's go to type two. Go back to Mark 4, verse 16. This type two. This is the Career. Book. Go ahead. This is the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 16. Go ahead. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Go ahead. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So these are the type of people who definitely come into this truth, you know? So when we're talking about that career, you look at the truth as a career, be mindful that it, it says that you were there for a significant amount of time. These are those who are here, two, three, five, eight, 10, 12, 15 years. You, 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 you've, you've set some roots down, right? And even probably began to grow, especially on the men's side. Gotten some promotion, became a soldier, became an officer of 10, 20, 50, maybe a captain, whatever the case may be, right? So read it again. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground. Sown on stony ground. Read on. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately Receive it with gladness. So they, they have that initial joy of coming in and understanding what this walk is all about. Read on. And have no root in themselves. Have no root. So that root, who is that root? Who is the root? Let's get who the root is. They have no root in themselves. If we don't have any root in ourselves, well, why do we receive it with gladness? You got that, Revelation 22? You got that? Okay. Who is that root? What is the root? This is the book of Revelations, chapter 22, verse 16. Go ahead. I, Jesus, have sent my angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. Go ahead. I am the root. I, who is the root? I am the root. Christ says he is the root. Read on. And the offspring of David. And the offspring of David. That's it on that? No, sir. Go and ahead, the read. bright and morning star. And the bright and morning star. Now go back. Verse 17. Yes, sir. Mark chapter 4, verse 17. Go ahead. And have no root in themselves. So they don't study to understand Christ. They don't study to build themselves up and build their character in the same fashion of Christ. Christ left that example that we may grow thereby. And we can read that in the scriptures. That is our comfort. That is our hope. That we can be found in the same fashion as our Lord and Savior, our Messiah, which is a black man. Just in case this is your first time, Jesus Christ is a black man. Understand That's that. Right. So when we have root, we understand what our Lord and Savior looks like. We understand what he stands for. Therefore, we can grow roots. But if we don't have any roots, we're not going to study the scriptures properly. We're not going to ask the questions that we need to have answered. We're not going to get a greater understanding of how we can start to fix our own personal lives to be in the same stature of Christ, that fullness and stature of Christ. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live 
on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. So go back, Mark 4, 17, read it again from the top. The book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 17. Go ahead. And have no root in themselves. They don't study, read. And so endure, but for a time. But for a time. Now, the scriptures don't say how long of a time that is. Like we said earlier, 2, 3, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15 years. Endure, but for a time. Read on. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arising for the word's sake. Go ahead. Immediately, they are offended. They are offended and they leave. When you're around for two, three, the 10, 15 years, you, be, you begin to build relationships. You get to know people. You know their families. You know, all, you, you've, you've sat down and broke bread with them multiple times. But what happens on this level of treating the truth like a career you get caught up in the accolades, the momentous events, right? Uh, you're, you're not really invested in the overall mission because it's all about vainglory unto you. As long as I can get a promotion and rule over brothers and sisters, that's the only reason why I'm here. I'm not really trying to uh, uh, do too much. And matter of fact, the bishops in uh, uh, leadership are always talking about 2018. 2018. Brothers who had much rank, much uh, uh um they had many accolades they had high, uh, high positions in the body you would have thought that the, the uh the truth was resting on their shoulders but as soon as they got moved out of the way guess what the lord raised up and called other people to come into this truth and fill their positions now we got more people in the it uh, av department than than a little bit That's taking it right. above and beyond what those negroes tried to hinder you can't stop what the Lord is putting together. No one can stop it. The kingdom is already prepared. The Lord is just trying us to see if we're fit for it, if we're worthy of that thing, right? So let's get into the career because this, there is certain tenure in this truth. To, to get into the ranks, there, there is many things that have to be seen. There are certain qualities, even on the sister side. To be an honorable sister, there's certain criteria that's necessary on that side. So let, let's look at criteria in the scriptures. Let's look at the criteria. First uh, Timothy chapter three verse one. This is the book of First Timothy chapter three verse one. Because in this truth, this is our profession. Being a prophet of God is our profession. Read on. This is a true saying. Uh -huh. If a man desire the office of a bishop. The office. If you desire that thing, that, that, that sounds like you have to be invested in that walk. You could consider it a career, an occupation, a mission to, uh, to obtain, right? If you desire the office of a bishop, because that is it. That's a work. That's a major work. Read on. He desireth a good work. You desire a good thing. There's nothing wrong with desiring to be a bishop, but there are certain qualities that we must all possess. Read on. A bishop then must be blameless. Go ahead. The husband of one wife. Go ahead. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality. Go ahead. Apt to teach. So these are various qualities that as you chase, or, or I ain't going to say chase. Let me not say that. As you develop your skills, right? Because, shoot, when I say chase, you're running after that thing. If it's a calling, that is. You're running to do that because you understand that that thing is powered by the Lord. You're doing the Lord's will when you're running after that. You're desiring that good work. So these are qualities you must have. Read verse 3. Not given to wine. Go ahead. No striker. Not greedy of filthy lucre. Go ahead. But patient. Patient. Go ahead. Not a brawler. Not a brawler. Not covetous. Not covetous. So these are things rooted in the scriptures that we should be instructing ourselves on 
and building our character, develop, developing our understanding so that we can exude these things. We can be examples of these things. Read on. One that ruleth well his own house, uh -huh. having his children in subjection with all gravity. Because these are the proper examples that our nation needs to see. When people walk into these doors, they should not be seeing the same projects they left. They should not. They should be walking in and saying, yo, this is what I've, this is that uh, cup of clean water that I've always been searching for. This is what I've always wanted. I've always wanted to be around like-minded individuals where love is dwelling in the midst. And I can tell there's love here because look at how that man and that wife agree together. Look at how those brothers are unified in the scriptures. Look at how these brothers are going out and being unified, doing the work of the Lord. I know I'm in the right place. But if they got to walk into a congregation where malice, envy, hatred is dwelling, hmm, people are just holding it down like a career in the Christian church. And that's what we need to be aware of. Be aware of. Right? So, read verse 5 again. Uh, verse 4? 5. Yes, sir. Verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? So, in this walk, if you're treating this like a career, you got to be, you got to have these qualities and know and matter of fact, these qualities must be shown in you because if those things don't show in you, you're not going to be able to actually lead the congregation to progress. You're not going to actually be able to lead the men, women, and children to their calling in this walk. All right? Verse 6. This is the point. Not a novice. Not a novice. Let and a lot of times you see this career-minded uh, hiccup amongst young men. Young men in the truth, maybe one, two years, uh, just got the rank of a soldier, just waiting to rule over men, right? And then that mentality goes up as they gain more prom or get promoted, that career mindset, just looking to get the accolades. But then once uh, 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 their rap sheet or reputation gets a little, uh, uh, what do what they call it? Give me a word. Once their reputation gets hit, and they get demoted, something comes about, now they hate everybody. Now, I don't, I, these niggas in here, they just hating on me. All right? They endure for a time. But when affliction comes, then we got an issue. All right? So not a novice. A bishop cannot be a novice. He has to have wisdom, experience to back up his wisdom. All right? Not a novice. Read. Less being lifted up with pride. With what? With pride. With what? With pride. And there is much vainglory sitting on top of your pride, your personal pride. Vainglory. Read on. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. Fall into the condemnation of the devil. Now, let's get an example of that. Third John, verse, uh, third John, verse 9. This is an example of someone being lifted up with pride, having that vainglory, right? So much so that mess up the, the true order and calling that came from the Lord. Let's get that. Third John, verse 9. Go ahead. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence. The what? The preeminence. Go ahead. Among them receiveth not us. Receiveth us not. He didn't. Diotrephes, he loved sitting in the high seat. He loved having everybody's admiration. So much so that when the other apostles came to deal with him in the church, he said, no, y'all can't come up in here because y'all going to make me move down to the lower seat. No, nah, I'm, I'm big man right here. Y'all going to respect me. Read on. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, patting against us with malicious words. Go ahead. And not content there, therewith. Get that definition for pratting. Pratting against us with malicious words. Pratting against us with... So, uh, what was he doing? Go ahead. There right. we go. Talk foolishly or at tedious length about something. So, dang. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth. His deeds were talking foolishly and he was talking foolishly at length about the apostles. 
with malicious words. So that means, oh, he was doing a lot of murmuring, complaining. Oh, he was probably slandering uh, uh, the apostles. Oh, he had much hatred. Oh, that, that, that was a lot. Malicious words. Read on. And Third. not. Pratting again. Go back to the script. Yes, sir. Third Pratting John, against us. Chapter 3, verse 10. Go ahead. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth. Go ahead. Prating against us with malicious words. With malicious words. Much hate was in his speech against the apostles. Read. And not content therewith. So he wasn't just content with what he did in murmuring and complaining. He had to go a little bit further. Read. Neither doth he re himself receive the brethren. He shut the doors on the apostles. Didn't allow them to come in. Don't even come near where, the school where I'm at. Read on. And forbiddeth them that would. Uh-huh. And casteth them out of the church. Casteth them out of the church. So that's what Diotrephes' career was all about. He got the position. He got set up. He did enough work to get put in that position. But then once he got that position, that vain glory sat upon him. So if you treat this truth like a career, be mindful that vain glory can sit upon you at any given time. And we've seen great men fall. And that vain glory or that pride set upon them, that preeminence to where they either didn't deal with their own personal sin correctly or they didn't deal with the congregation correctly. And it had them put up out of these doors. Right. Read. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. So we get warning in these scriptures also. Follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. Read. He that doeth good is of God. Go ahead. But he that doeth evil have not seen God you ain't you don't understand these scriptures if you do evil you don't understand these scriptures and what they're actually promoting you to do and promoting you to have and that having is going into the kingdom where we have rest now the last type of Israel and this is what we should all be wanting right go back to uh, mark 4 because when we're in this calling Regardless of what background we have or we come from, whether we had that good background and we just needed to understand Christ or whether we came from that dirty background, that deceitful, grimy background, we got to come into this calling and set our lives in order that this truth is because the truth is going to grow regardless. But I want to be a part of it. Let me just put it like, let me make things personal. I want to be a part of this truth growing. I want to be able to, uh, uh, to hear Christ say, well done. Well done. You, you were jacked up, but I'm advocating for you because you did a good job at what I called you to do. That's, that's how personal this thing got to be when you understand your calling, right? So within a calling, there's constant examination. When you're given work to do, you should be abounding in that work, finding new ways to push this truth, right? And strive to become a master in that craft, right? Seeking the kingdom, you may fall, but the endurance is manifested through the trials that show your true worth and value. So let's deal with that. Go back to uh, Mark 4. Verse 20, sir. Yes. Where have we left off? Mark chapter 4, verse 20. Go ahead. And these are they which are sown on good ground. On good ground. We just read the script earlier. But that which is good, he that doeth good is of God. We want to be sown on that good ground. That's why much work has to go into keeping you in that fertile ground. Read on. Such as hear the word uh -huh. and receive it. Receive the word. You take it on. Read. And bring forth fruit. And bring forth fruit. You bring forth fruit. Read on. Some 30-fold, some 60, and some in 100. So let's get that fruit. Matthew 3 and verse 8, if I'm not mistaken. Matthew 3 and verse 8. What do these fruits show? What do these fruits show you about that person? Go ahead. Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. Go ahead. Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Bring forth the fruits that show that your mindset is about repenting and that you're willing to be an example of repentance to your people. Go over to John 15. I think that's what I want. John 15, where Christ says, I am the vine. Let's get that. Yes. John 15, verse 1. Verse one. Yes. John chapter 15, verse 1. Go ahead. 
I am the true vine. So Christ is that vine. Christ is that root. Read. And my father is the husbandman. Go ahead. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. So understand this. We come into this walk. God calls us. He says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. I don't want to be that, 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 that person. I don't want to be that. You shouldn't want to be that because you understand that you're called to bring forth fruit, meet for repentance. Read the next part. And every branch that beareth fruit, Go ahead. he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. That's where the 30-fold, the 60-fold, 100-fold come from. Because in this walk, these instructions, they're going to purge us. We're going to have to have certain, so if, you, if you know anything about gardening or husbandry, you would know that rose bushes, you have to cut uh, certain, vine, uh, certain parts of that thing off. You got to go out into your garden and you have to pull up the weeds so that when you do set seed into the ground, into the good ground, that it bring forth those fruit abundantly and it's not choked. Understand that. So let's go back. Matter of fact, let's jump over to let's jump over to the video. And I'm I, I you know I'm from the tribe of Judah, but I, I I did have a sometimes I think I might be Benjamin, but we ain't gonna put that out there. <laughs> so let's get not that one. Let's get the other one. So I saw this YouTube short when and it was still dealing in the calling. All right. So shout out to the tribe of Benjamin. More fire, more fire, right? So let's look at this video real quick because this is how wolves organize their nation. So let's look at this. We on the screen? A Canadian photographer captured a wolf pack's formation and it's mind blowing. Guess what? The leader isn't at the front. The three wolves leading the pack are noticeably bigger, but who'd guess they are the weakest in the group? They are the oldest, or the sick ones among the wolves. Leading the pack, they set the pace and ensure they don't get left behind. Stop, 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 stop. There's some heavy stuff just in there. Leave, leave it. I want you to, I want the picture up there. I'm going to get me off the screen. When we come into this truth, get Matthew 6, verse 33. A lot of us think that we're not um, given the authority to show forth certain uh, 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 leadership qualities or, or good qualities that you have within you. And I want this to be known. Let's go ahead and read the script. Let's go ahead and read the script. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. So this is for those day ones. Or it, sometimes we have to hit the refresh button in this truth, too, for ourselves. Read on. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is a part of that purging. Because sometimes the riches of this world and the lust of other things jump in. And, and cloud our judgment, whether that's your beginner or whether you got tenure here. So, read it again. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. We must all have that in our mind to seek first the kingdom of God. Read. And his righteousness. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So, all things are going to be added to us. If our mindset is focused on doing the Lord's work. Now, how does that transfer to these wolves? It says that the old and the injured were at the front of the pack, setting the pace because they don't want to be left behind. So what does that mean? Everybody has a place in our nation moving forward. Everybody. And those who feel like they're weak in the spirit, you should be at the front. You should be wanting to do more work, abounding in whatever skills and talents that the Lord has given you so that you can be because I don't think, shoot, if you sick for a little while and you got to leave the pack and then you get better, shoot, you fall back into formation. But in this scenario, I, I, I thought that was powerful because then they said, I'm still about my nation and I'm willing to put my life on the line. Because it also says that these are the ones who have to accept that they may die first. So understand, <laughs> like that's some heavy stuff. These are the ones who accept that they, I may have to die first. But watch this. I also got my brothers behind me. And they're more fashion. They, 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 they still have their strength to come up and help me. So I don't have to die, but I'm ready to. And that's what our, our leadership has always been telling us. And they're preparing us for death. So, yes, we are weak in spirit in certain cases. But that should mean we're leading the charge. We should be leading the charge. Read on. 
I meant play on. Smart move, but they'd be the first casualties in an attack. They would the be the first tier casualties. Is where the real strength lies. They are the young and strong ones, quick to react and exceptionally fierce. So they pause. Swoop in With the young and the fierce ones, their strategy. So y'all don't think that? See, see, this is how you know that the men who are leading us are called of the Lord because their strategy being put together for the young men. The strategy. These young men, us young men, are being dispatched different places around the globe with much vigor, much understanding. We're growing in understanding to go teach our people. Like one of the bishops said, this is a young man's game. War is all about the young men being able to go out, be tactical, be wise. We're learning to be ambassadors in this truth. So our calling is going to bring forth more fruit in us that we may go to out throughout the earth and show them that this is called of us by God. So read that. I will play that again. Then and target the attackers while the old wolves engage. Uh -huh. Then comes the third tier. These are the women and children of the pack. Not very strong. But they are the future. Stop. So they, they are the future. So, women, children, y'all got to get in line. You get in line with what's going on. This is why it's a beautiful thing to have unity amongst the brethren. If you understand this calling and the value that this calling is given to us as a nation, everybody should just get in line. Play your role. Do your best at your role. Abound in the work of your role so we can get the hell up out of captivity. That's what this walk is all about. Play the next part. Walk where it's safest. Next up is the fourth tier. Just as tough as the second tier, they act as the bodyguards. Uh. This formation is genius. Even if there's a surprise attack from behind, the women and children remain safe. It also buys time for the other tiers to react and assist. And lastly, so this stop, 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 stop. So that first, tier, that, that, that first tier of the young men, men just ready to go to war, right? You got the women. In, I, I could consider that the local leadership. You, they, they are going to lead the men, men, women, and children, right? Right? That back tier, the bodyguards, that's your upper leadership. Those are the men who's, who've already set the tactics in order, set the nation in order. They're giving the instruction. They're the ones who... Uh, uh, help us to understand the instruction of Christ. Now that one in the back, who y'all think that is? Who is that? That's Christ. Christ is in the background because when when the when the stuff get bad, that's when he that's when he coming back to get us. So understand that. I just I found that ironic as I saw this little. I had to play it over. You know how you got to play something over and over again to really get to understand of what's taking place. That's Christ in the back. I was thinking it was like you know the camp leader, whatever case. I said, nah, I'm thinking small. That's Christ in the background. He's he's waiting to see what everybody's going to do. Whether they're going to stay loyal to the mission, they're going to stay uh, or follow the calling, the the instructions that come with their calling. And once he sees that everybody's doing what they need to do, if they do fall into trouble. That's when he go into action. So, all praise to the most high. Now, as a nation, go to the next video. See, that's some heavy stuff right there. That's some heavy. Shout out to Benjamin. Shout out to Ben, Raven and Wolf. All right? So, go to the next video. Got me hype. I ain't want to get off track. This Now, this is, pull it up on the screen. This is supposed to be a video game, right? But it had me thinking, if this is truly the wisdom of a wolf, what can we learn from it? We, we, the scriptures say go to the ant, consider their ways. What about we, we ruled these animals. So who did they learn from? They had to have learned from us. So let's see the wisdom of a wolf. Let's see. This is supposed to be a, a game, but let's, let's see what we can learn from this. Go ahead. A wolf in trouble. Uh-oh, stop. So communication within this calling is very important. Woe be unto him that is alone when he falleth. Message. So even wolves know to communicate. Read. Let's see what the communication does. Read. I'm mean, play. I'm in trouble. Help me out. Okay, we got you. We'll put out the fire. Uh-oh. One of our children. Is in trouble. 
Uh oh, communicate again. Same formation, everybody understand their job. Oh, shit. And we save our nation. Join the wolf pack. So, the hunt is on. Now, all praise to the most high. Now, watch this. I can imagine. But we, we always want to put that back to the screen. I can imagine that's what it was almost like when Abraham went to go get Lot. When he assembled those men. Let's go find out what's going on. Let's make this thing. Let's go get our brother back. I, that's the type of forefathers we have. So if our forefather had that mindset, we need to have that mindset in this calling, in this walk. All right. So let's go back to some scriptures. We almost done. Dealing with our calling, dealing with our calling in this truth. And we're going to, uh, let's get this. Let's go to Second Peter. Second Peter. Matter of fact, before we go to Second Peter, let's get John 6, verse 63. And we're going to read down. We're going to read down. Okay, John 6, verse 63. This is the book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. Go ahead. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. So, the spirit is dwelling within us. So, as we get these instructions, as we learn the scriptures and we learn to apply the scriptures, it should change us. That's what quickening means, to be changed. If you're the same man now that you were three years ago, you haven't changed. If you're the same woman that you were three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, we got to change. There has to be a constant purging of our spirit. You got to be examining yourself to know what to purge so that when you do have trials in this walk, you know how to deal with them properly. Matter of fact, that will help the accountability and the issues go down. Accountability will go up, issues will go down because you'll say, no, nah, I can't blame that sister because that, uh, that was in me. Well, I can't blame that brother because I think I, I messed up. Let me go apologize. Let me go make it right. Let me humble my spirit. And that's what we need to get into the kingdom. Read on, verse 64. Verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. There are some that believe not, whether you're taking it on as a job or a career. Some don't believe. Been here for a little bit of time, or some people here for a long time, and they just don't believe. Read on. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not. So Christ already know. That's that's why that that that, that formation was heavy. Because Christ just sitting back, like, let me see who's gonna really betray the nation. He's watching. Christ already had to endure that in his lifetime. So you don't think Christ know that it's gonna happen in these times? He don't it, like he don't know who don't believe amongst us. Read on. And who should betray him? Who should betray him? Read on. And he said, therefore, said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. You had to be called. You have to be called. Read. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Uh-oh. So they had a job that could have been a career. But they didn't accept their calling. They didn't like certain things. They didn't like certain instruction. They didn't appreciate the affliction and persecution that came with that thing. So they said, I'm not walking with you no more. But the one who was called, read on. Then, then said Jesus unto the twelve, will ye also go away? Ah, to the ones that he called and picked himself. He said, are y'all going to leave too? Are y'all going to leave me too? Read. Then Simon Peter answered him. Lord, to whom shall we go? To what? To whom shall we go? So, that's a called mindset. Lord, I ain't got nowhere else to go. <laughs> and man, you know how children always say, and this child I'm talking about was me. You know how you, you man, I'm upset, I'm leaving, I'm gotta go. Uh, you upset with the world. I, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna run away. But then, you start looking at how long that road is, how dark the road is, and then you realize, Nah, I'm good. I got food here. <laughs> I don't know nobody down the street. That's that's when you know who you're in subjection to. A child to a parent. The nation of Israel unto Christ. We don't have anywhere else to go. All we're going to go out to 
if we leave this body and leave this truth is death and destruction. That's all we're going to have. Death and destruction. Read that part again. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? I ain't got nowhere else to go, Lord. Read. Thou hast the words of eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. You have the instruction to get us into the kingdom of heaven. Why would I leave you? Read. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the son of the living God. We know who you are. It's been given to us. It's been revealed to us who you are. Why would I leave that, Lord? That's got to be our mindset here in the truth. That's got to be our If you understand that this is your calling, and you're making, you're going to give diligence to make your calling and election sure. You got to say, I ain't got nowhere else to go. So I might as well give my all where I'm at. In whatever little sanctuary I'm in, I'm going to give my all. Let's get Second uh, Peter. Now we're going to Second Peter. We're going to close off here. Second Peter 1 verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. According as his divine power have given un unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So the acknowledging of the truth has opened us all to life and godliness. We learn those things through the commandments. Read. Through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. So glory and virtue are what we're being called unto. Those are things that we have to be example of. The Lord's glory by following the commandments. And then the commandments are those virtues, those high moral standards. And along with those high moral standards come a great reward. A great reward of an incorruptible body. A kingdom where there is only rest. That's what we're being called to. Read on. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. We have exceeding and great promises awaiting us for just simply obeying, coming back to our nationality and doing what God requires of us. That's what we have waiting on us. Read on. That by these. That by these promises. Go ahead. Ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Of the divine nature. Of the divine nature. We can be partakers. Read. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And that's what we got to guard our spirits from. Falling into the old corruption, that old man, our old ways. And if we're treating this truth like a job or a career where it's about our vain glory anyway, what we'll do, we'll fall into those lusts and then eventually the Lord will weed us out. He will take us away because that's not of, of divine Christ. Read on. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith Virtue. Go ahead. And to virtue, knowledge. Read on. And to knowledge, temperance. So, as you grow in this truth, you got to be, or as you gain tenure in this truth, you have to be adding these virtues and these qualities to you, to your spirit. Read on. And to temperance, patience. So, having that self control, learning how to control yourself when things don't go your way. Read. And to patience, Godliness. So when you're dealing in those trials, you know what the Lord requires of you, how to uh, order your steps according to God's word. Read on. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. So as you're ordering your steps, you should be able to impart that wisdom to another brother, another sister, another family. And you should be building that brotherly kindness because that's what we never learned in the world. Brotherly kindness, nigga, please. We don't. We ain't never understood brotherly kindness in the world unless it was over uh, smoking some weed or, or drinking. But in this body, we're adding to ourselves great virtues, and behind those virtues are great promises. Read on. Into brotherly kindness, charity. Learning how to build your nation. Charity goes into building your nation. Read on. For if these things be in you and abound. And a what? And abound. So if these qualities, if they ain't in you right now, you got to work on putting these qualities and building up these qualities. Ask, getting counsel, going to the leadership, sitting at their feet, gaining from their wisdom and experience. Then these things you can start to meditate on and start to take on those actions that actually bring them forward. That's, and then it says, if these things be in you and abound, these are the things that you share with other brothers, other sisters. 
And then that becomes your reputation. They know you to be that charitable brother or that patient sister, right? That brother got a lot of temper, man. He, he, in situations like that, he don't just fly off the handle. He actually examines the matter. Read on. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. Uh-oh. So you will bring forth fruit. Because you're not going to be barren because you're going to make sure that you're adding to yourself constantly. That purging process, your pruning process is constantly taking place. You're always examining yourself and saying, what can I do better today that I didn't quite execute on yesterday? This truth is all about fixing ourselves daily. Read on. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read on. But. He that lacketh these things is blind. He that lacketh these things is just like that hireling, blind, confused, don't know where they're going, don't know what they need to be doing. I'm only taking this to just meet a, a need. I only got a, a personal need that I need to make, so I don't really care about nothing. If you don't have these things or you're not focusing on these things in this walk, then how are you going to expect to get the kingdom? These things are necessary in achieving the kingdom. Read on. And cannot see afar off. You, you can't even see the steps that's going to take to get the kingdom. Read on. And have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. And that's why you always have issues in the body. Because you forgot that the Lord pulled you out of your sin. So much so that you can't apply those same things with your neighbor. Read on. Wherefore, though rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. So. We must all give diligence to make our calling and election sure. That's what we're called in here to do. We're called in here from whether it's a good or bad background, and we're called to do the work of the Lord. Always, and we should always want to abound in those things as we add these virtues to us. Read on. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. If, that's a, that's a heavy word. If we do these things, we should not fall. Read on. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it says, for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly. The word is going out. We're being taught day in, day out, 24-7, how to achieve the kingdom. Being taught how to examine ourselves. Being taught how to order our household, order our lives, so that we may enter into the kingdom. And this kingdom ain't just temporary like it's a job. It ain't got no opening hours, no closing hours. It's everlasting. It's ongoing. It's going to be forever. So it says there's an everlasting kingdom, and that kingdom is run by the Most High God, and our king is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Read verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, uh -huh. though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. So, it says, wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance. That's what these classes are all about, to always be reminded that these scriptures are meant for our learning. That these scriptures are meant to improve our lifestyle, to improve the way that we carry ourselves, to improve our nation, right? So we always have to be reminded of these things, that we may know them and be established in this present truth. Understand, this class is called job, career, or calling. Are you treating this truth like a job, a career, or a calling? We're hoping it's the latter. And if it's not, a uh, 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 calling right now in your mind. Hopefully this class is edifying uh, to you that you may build your spirit. So with that, we say shalom. Sign Christ bless you all. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's nation time.